Guys, this is what we've got for Season 3. These are the dungeons right here. So we've got Dark Heart Thicket as one of the first returning dungeons. So wait, how have they done this then? So, I mean, these are just all the dungeons here. But Dark Heart Thicket, from what I can remember, was a pretty solid dungeon. I don't know if I'm just blinded by Legion being literally the best expansion for Mythic Plus, even though it was the first one. But I, I'm pretty sure I love this dungeon. There was definitely some scary bosses on Tyrannical though, right? Because we had the Dragon Boss that also spawned the Explosive Orbs if it was the explosive week i don't know if we're going to get explosive back hopefully not for season three hopefully they just keep the current affixes and remove afflicted and incorporal but yeah that dragon boss is definitely scary on tyrannical and the last boss is terrifying on tyrannical because at 50 percent health it would just one shot your group like instantly wouldn't it or at least do like 90 percent of your health or something like that four 39 minute dungeons by the way yeah that's going to be interesting one of my criterias is short dungeons equals good dungeon. And we've got four 39 minute dungeons. Yeah, I, I really like Dark Heart Thicket. It's got some nice trash in it. Again, with the trash at the start, we had those bears that we used to skip. Like your tank would run ahead and pull them off to the side. Your tank would then die. You'd run to the left into the first boss arena and then res your tank because those bears hit so bloody hard. Literally all four bosses in Dark Heart Thicket were rough on Tyrannical. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, the first boss is scary in Dark Heart Thicket. Second boss, I don't feel like was too bad. Wouldn't it just like munch your tank up and you had to soak the roots so they wouldn't spawn adds? Third boss, yeah, very scary. And last boss was absolutely terrifying. Although a lot of those bosses aren't too mechanic heavy. I feel like the first boss is probably the most mechanic heavy in Dark Heart Thicket. Then we've got Black Rook Hold after that. I've been calling brackenhide hollow black crook hold this whole season so basically i already knew it was going to be a thing there is a lot of scary mobs in here and a lot of room for wiping in this dungeon especially on fortified those first couple of packs you got a lot of kicks on those first mobs first boss isn't too bad though on tyrannical if you don't have the damage then you're not going to kill it it is going to wipe you after that you've got the archers that are going to one shot you on fortified with their shoots so play marksmanship hunter or boomy and outrange it like we used to back in the day you got the mobs that do the frontal you would hide around the pillar for when the mini boss jumps down so they all ran around to you but yeah i just remember those archers at a certain level of fortified were just absolutely like obliterating everybody then you move on to the demon hunter boss i hate that boss with a passion i don't know if that's just because i'm bad but that boss is horrible I just feel like I always died like so weirdly on that boss because you got the laser that follows you around but it like wasn't there some like finicky movement with the laser or something like that. Then you've got to kill the adds when they come in. After that you've got to dodge the boulders on the stairs probably the hardest part of the dungeon. Then you go into the part where I literally used to pull the whole world when I was tanking back in Legion and then run back with an affliction lock that slowed absolutely everything but we're not going to be able to do that anymore. That room is scary though, and especially on Sanguine. Like we've had experience with these dungeons on the uh, time walking Mythic Plus that we've had. And I remember Sanguine being an absolute pain in those corridors. Then you go up the stairs with all the bats and the fell guards. That's not too much of an issue, is it? I don't think so. I think that should be good. Like you can do massive pulls there and get overwhelmed, but generally there's not too much to deal with there. You just got to make sure you kick. Fourth, no. Third boss. Third boss is the big ogre, right? There's only four bosses in here. He's scary on Tyrannical. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. People did used to invis the start of the uh, Black Rook Hold and just run to the first boss, didn't they? Because that first trash got so scary. I can't even remember what's so scary in that first pack. They have like a volley, don't they? But more importantly, they have a heal. And if the heals keep going off, then you're just doomed. They changed the mobs and stuff that you need to range already, I think. Holy moly. Yeah, I do think a lot of changes are going to go on. So hopefully they're going to be positive changes. Maybe they stop us from outranging the archers, but then they tone down the damage of the shoots. Because we all know that that was a problem. And they have changed dungeons that they've returned in the past. So hopefully they do that again. Bracken was the scariest, but now it's a crowd favorite. So I think the Bracken hide of this season that everybody was scared about before the patch dropped. And then it's now everybody's favorite. I think that's going to be Everbloom. 
I don't know why, because I don't really know the dungeon, but I feel like a lot of people are going to be scared of this dungeon going into it. But because of how open it is, people are going to love it by the end. But we'll go in, into Everbloom in a little bit here. We'll go through them uh, chronologically. Next, we've got Waycrest Manor. Now, with this dungeon, you did a big pull at the start. I don't think those mobs were too scary, were they? The thing that I remember about this dungeon being terrifying is the council boss, especially on Tyrannical. That boss is terrifying. Like, I remember wiping so many times on that boss on Tyrannical. So that's going to be interesting. But again, with these dungeons that they bring back, they always tune stuff so much differently. So what used to be hard is sometimes free and vice versa. I don't know how that's going to actually work out. But yeah, I remember that room being scary and then the boss being scary. <laughs> then you've got the corridor with all the sad little maggots. That's a fun corridor. Like, you can do some big pulls in there, can't you? You used to be able to snap that onto... Or not snap it, you would get your range to go and stand on like the waterfall in the courtyard, wouldn't you? So that they didn't take some damage. I imagine that's probably going to end up being fixed. Then you've got like the bark type boss out in that courtyard. But didn't you have to kill two other bosses first to activate him? Or I remember you had to do something to activate that boss. I remember being scared of the first pull in Waycrest for some reason. Was that a kite pack? No, I think it was a kick pack, wasn't it? Because don't you have like one big mob and then you've got like the little shades on the side? And you used to split it up. I can't remember exactly what those shades do. But yeah, then the, the rest of Waycrest Manor, you've got the room with like the fat ooze lady boss thing in the bob. Lots of ninja pulling to be done in there. And I feel like that boss was pretty scary on Tyrannical. Because um, you have to like stop the mobs getting back into it. I don't know how I'm remembering this like all on the spot as I go. Like I, as I'm saying it, I'm remembering the bosses. But before I'm talking about it, I just can't even remember what they're doing. Then you go downstairs. Like, this dungeon is long, but I kind of love this dungeon. There's a lot of big pools in it. I love, like, the horror theme of it as well. But there is definitely some scary trash and mobs in there. Uh, trash and bosses, sorry. There's also a very good trinket and waycrest for casters. This is the other thing, Whiters, is there probably was. I can't remember what trinket you're talking about. But a lot of trinkets that used to be good back in the day are not that good anymore. So, like... If you think of, like, Mark of Dargrel, used to be absolutely OP back in the day, right? And now, like, I would think that my survival hunter would want it, but apparently it's awful. The Waycrest 2 set, I, that rings a bell as well. I can't remember what the Waycrest 2 set is, but... I'm, like, the fact that they're now bringing back old dungeons and putting into the current uh, map pool is unreal. You go down the stairs. I remember there being scary mobs that you have to like. You used to have to like jump on the windowsill or like the lantern or something so it wouldn't snap to you, right? But then you've got the uh, like undead couple boss, or were they brother and sister? I don't actually know. I remember them being pretty terrifying. Mechanically, quite an easy fight, but she used to do a hell of a lot of damage, right? And then more importantly, after that boss, those smallies that are in like the um, little cavern like crevasse type thing those used to one shot everybody right and i think that's what you used to have to jump on the window sills for so that's going to be interesting on fortified we'll see if they are still one shotting absolutely everything and then the last boss you had to what was the last boss you used to have to kick it and then it would spawn an ad did you have to kill the ad in time or like you weren't allowed to get overwhelmed by the ads right otherwise it was a wipe but i can't remember what the ads did Oh yeah, you used to have to burn the corpses. So, pretty interesting mechanic right there. So, the Waycrest Manor, the, the clue's in the name. W, Waycrest Manor. W, A, Crest Manor. That's what we're calling it from now on. So far, three pretty decent dungeons. They're not my favourites. I think out of the three so far, Waycrest Manor is probably my favourite out of these three. But, moving on to a Tal Dazar next. Very linear dungeon, but I think it is a fan favourite, right? There, it's linear, but there is a lot of room for uh, like optional and optimal routing here i would say because i remember the routing changed like halfway through the season right again scary bosses on tyrannical like that last boss is terrifying and takes an absolute age to kill on tyrannical you got the boss over on the right he wasn't too hard i don't feel like obviously at a certain key level it's going to get difficult i can't remember what the boss on the left used to do i remember something about gold over there isn't there an ad that like spewed gold or chat what did the la what did the left boss do i can't remember you had to like have a debuff by stepping in the gold for when the ad channels and if you don't it's big bad that is ringing a bell i remember there being an ad 
I remember you having to stand in the puddle and only one person can have each puddle, right? I don't think it was too hard, but I do remember it. one of the mechanics being really scary on high keys. Yeah, AD's, yeah, Atoll Desert is super quick as well. That's going to be a 30-minute timer. Love the first boss, Dinosaurs, Polchamp. So that's a W. Trash in the middle, we used to skip in the very middle, didn't we? You've got the trash on the right that you had some kicks for, trash on the left that you had some kicks for. I remember it being quite scary trash, but for a linear dungeon and also a dungeon with like lower mob density, you used to do some pretty hefty pulls, especially over on the left side as you enter the dungeon. Yeah, but I mean, other than that, I wonder if we'll still be skipping the mobs in the middle. Apparently the snapping you guys said is fixed, so we won't be able to snap the little smallie dinosaurs which people used to absolutely abuse back in the day. We also don't have the skip affix that we used to have, where we used to be able to do the routing with that. Because I remember skipping some terrifying mobs with that. There is some scary mobs over towards the right-hand side of the room, isn't there? There's like a shaman-type mob that I remember was pretty scary. But I do think everybody's generally going to be better players now as well. So the kicks that we used to find scary is now just, oh, it's like one or two kicks that we have to deal with. However, then you get onto the last boss and that's definitely going to deplete your key. Which is going to feel bad. I hate it when last bosses are like the walls of keys because then you've just done a super clean dungeon. And then you go into an absolute wall of a tyrannical boss. And yeah, that last boss is bloody scary. Lots of mechanics to execute lots and lots and lots of health to actually take down and yeah just big damage as well so a tal desire that's i mean a a tier for a tal desire there we go so everbloom and throne of the tides i'm not too familiar with these dungeons so i'm not going to go over them massively i've played everbloom a few times in time walking and it seems like it's got a lot of room for different routes, which is a massive W for my criteria of a good dungeon. So that's huge. It's also got big pulls, it seems like. I don't know if in higher keys, maybe you can't do the big pulls because maybe there's too many kicks. I feel like there's a lot of kicks in this dungeon, but it seems like you can definitely pull pretty wild in here. The bosses, I'm not too familiar with the mechanics, but there's a council boss, right? So AOE classes are gonna do really well on that. You got the mage boss after that one. I remember that area sort of being pretty scary even on time walking. So yeah, that's gonna be interesting in actual Mythic Plus content. And then you go up, to, you go through the portal to the last boss, right? And isn't that like a mini like raid boss? I feel like that boss has got so much health, but don't you use like mechanics to kill it or something? The mage boss ever on Everbloom on Tyrannical, yikes, yeah, I'm feeling, I, I remember that area being scary. I can't remember if it's because of like the mage trash around that boss or the mage boss itself. I think that could be a very scary area on a Tyrannical or Fortified. It has a load of health, but it dies before it helps, before its health reaches zero because of the weird RP stuff. Ah, okay. So yeah, I don't, I'm not too familiar with any mechanics in any of these here. Um... But I think Everbloom, like I was saying, Everbloom is going to be the Brackenhide. We're all going to be scared of Everbloom before, but it's going to be everybody's favorite dungeon by the end of the season. You heard it here first. I'm bloody telling you. I actually can't wait for that dungeon. and I don't even know the mechanics, so maybe I'll be uh, absolutely terrified of it when I actually figure out what's going on in there. Also, I think there's something to be said for dungeons that are like bright and vibrant in colors as well. Like I know that's hypocritical about the Waycrest Manor, because it's very dark and gloomy, but like there's room for a horror-esque dungeon. But dungeons like Everbloom, Algathar Academy, what's some other bright dungeons that we've got? I mean, maybe Vortex Pinnacle, but not that kind of bright. We want like nature and stuff like that. Nature's pole champ. Then we got Throne of the Tides. Um, I had a look on YouTube earlier at like a quick walkthrough of this dungeon. I still don't know what really happens in this dungeon, but I remember from back in the day, there seems to be a lot of kicks in this dungeon. I remember some like chain lightning sort of things. Um, maybe some heals going off as well. Seems like a very linear dungeon. Then you've got the like mistress as the first boss, I'm pretty sure. And you've got to deal with like the ads or something like that. Again, can't really comment too much because I have no idea how these are going to scale as actual Mythic Plus. You've got the like void sort of guy after that. Then you've got 
you got a bloody elevator, which is going to be a big old RP waste of time, isn't it? I can't remember what the third boss is. It's like a little tentacle squid dude, isn't it? I can't remember. And then the last boss is interesting. At first, I thought it was going to hate it. But isn't it just waves of ads on the last boss? So I think that could actually be pretty unique and interesting as a last boss. But yeah, the only problem is I think this dungeon's super linear. It's super long as well, as far as I'm aware. So I imagine this is one of the 39 minute timer dungeons. So excited for the elevator on Mythic Plus. Yeah, that's going to be interesting. Surely there's going to be like a portal or something just to go upstairs. Last boss is going to be Pog because you get the buff at the end that turns you into a Giga Chad. So your KCs will hit for like 1 million. So maybe there's a world where there's some tech where you skip to the last boss and you get that buff and you run back through the dungeon and clear it all with like hitting for like a million percent harder and then you just like three chest at plus 30 poggers in the lair so that is the six returning dungeons and then obviously we have the two wings of dawn of the infinite as well so we got galacron's fall which i imagine is going to be up to iridacron i'm sure it's already been announced but i'm pretty sure it's up to iridacron i think this first wing is going to be super quick because there's four four bosses in it i'm pretty sure you've got the first boss you've got um manifested time ways you've got blight of galacrond and then straight after that you've got iridacron right so you've got four bosses i can't remember too much trash you've got a bit of trash at the start you clear the room where the manifested time ways is but yeah i feel like this is going to be uh like sort of boss heavy dungeon so on Tyrannical, this is definitely going to be scary. Imagine a bloody Tyrannical Iridacron. That's going to be terrifying. But I do think the scarier Tyrannical bosses are going to be Manifested Timeways and also the Blight of Galacrond. I think they're going to be scary because Manifested Timeways, I think, is just going to do a lot of damage. And Blight of Galacrond, I think, is relatively mechanic intensive. I think the other two are generally going to be okay. Iridacron's got a lot of mechanics, but they're relatively simple mechanics, right? The ads could get pretty scary and maybe, yeah, actually maybe the Earth Surge where you've got a DPS down that shield, that could get very, very tight on Tyrannical Weeks. But I'm actually quite excited for this wing. I don't think I'm as excited for the Murazon's Rise wing because you're going to have a lot of trash in this and also a lot of walking time, right? So you're going to start at tier, I'm pretty sure. Then you've got to do the gauntlet and we all saw how my gauntlet skills are looking like, so... Yeah, I'm going to be depleting a lot of these keys. Then you've got the sand area. That's going to be terrifying on Fortified. Walk over to the Time Lost Battlefield. That is kind of a free boss, but I think they'll probably change the tuning on it to make it an actual boss. You've got uh, Morchi. Not really too intensive mechanic-wise, but you do have to find her in time and then get behind her. Otherwise, you're toast. And then is it just one more boss there? Then you just have um, Chrono Lord Dios at the end, right? I think Chrono Lord Dios is going to be terrifying on Tyrannical. Because he was already slapping in the Mega Dungeon. So imagine that when it's actually scaled up. Quite mechanic intensive. You do have the help from the aspects. I wonder how that will work in Mythic Plus. But yeah, you've got to time those orbs falling properly. You've got to deal with the adds. So yeah, that's going to be an interesting fight, I think. Yeah, the trash before uh, the Blight of Galacrond is going to slap. But was it... I don't think it's before Galacrond. Maybe it is those two dragons. Maybe they will hurt. But I think the scarier trash that we're thinking about is in the Blight of Galacrond room. But it's after you go back. Just before Chrono Lord Dios. I remember struggling with those. But maybe we were just bad. I don't know. But yeah, that is all the dungeons. I am super happy with that. Like, in comparison to what I thought we were going to get. I thought we were going to get Siege of Baralis. I thought we were going to get Shrine of the Storm. I can't remember the other dungeons that were speculated. But yeah, I'm actually super happy with these dungeons. Throne of the Tides could be an L. If they don't tune this correctly or sort out some of the mechanics in there. Not that I know any of the mechanics, but I know this is the one that people are least looking forward to. That could be scary. I think Everbloom is going to be everybody's favorite by the end. Atoll Desire is a good dungeon. We all know that that is a good dungeon. Waycrest Manor, long but I enjoy the dungeon personally. Blackrook Hold, I think, is on the lower tier of the dungeons in this map pool right here. Um, Darkheart Thicket, really enjoy that dungeon. Quite linear, though. And then we've got the Dawn of the Infinites. I'm probably going to end up preferring Galacron's Fall. But, 
Yeah, I think this is probably going to be on the lower end for me at first glance. But obviously it depends on mechanics, depends on tuning, depends on all of that good stuff. So we will see. It's looking like we've got quite a long dungeon timer for most of the dungeons next season, which I'm not too happy about, but that's probably the only negative thing that I can say so far.